Mic check. Mic check, mic check. It's a beautiful day out here. You guys like my new marmot jacket? I think the green, the dark navy green goes well with the the red keepa. This is episode 38 of the Sanjo podcast. We have a lot to talk about, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or donkey. I, I don't know which political party uses what animal. Doesn't matter. The GOP's elephant, right? Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Donald Trump has just been reelected as president of the United States. And it is reflective of a tide shift in America. A lot of people voted for various different reasons. I voted. For Donald Trump. Now you might be wondering, what? If you've been on this channel for the past 10 years, you've known my political extremes, my ups and downs, my lefts, my rights. And it may seem like a surprise to many of you, but to be honest, I think most Americans at this point, via the Republicans winning the House, the Senate, the electoral vote, and the popular vote, that many people are tired of identity politics. Many people are tired of their gender, their race, and their identity being used as political tools to push for votes while simultaneously being misheard. And I am one of those people. I am someone who sits within the Black community, the Indigenous community, the Jewish community, the LGBT community. And I'm tired of being spoken for. I'm tired of people believing that one party supports me and the other party doesn't. When in fact, yeah, that was the case. It was just in the opposite direction. Something that I found really crazy last night is over 150,000 Amish people came out of their lands and voted in Pennsylvania and quite literally won Trump Pennsylvania, which was a turning point in the election. These people don't even have TVs. They don't use electricity for the most part. They live a very conservative, traditional life. They live how our ancestors did. And even they're tired of Camel Harris. They're tired of Waltz. And I was too. As someone who has been living the van life for the past four years, I've lived this whole cycle through the Biden administration. And I heard last time, well, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. I heard this time, well, if you don't vote for Kamala, you don't care about women's rights and abortion rights. And uh, you're actually racist and sexist. And it's almost as if More than half the country has bigger things to worry about than abortion rights. It has bigger things to worry about than being called garbage, than being called sexist, than being called bigoted. And no, it was not just white men. It wasn't just black men. It wasn't just Latino men. It was Latino women, black women, white women. It was Americans. Americans spoke last night. Americans have been speaking for the past four years about their dissatisfaction with the administration. And when you have someone like Kamala Harris, who was the vice president during this whole time, who had every ounce of power as the second most powerful person in the country to say, I'm going to make significant change. But instead, she used her position to criticize Trump and attack Trump and call his supporters garbage, fascists, literal Nazis. She got what she deserved, which was an L, and I'm very happy about that. I'm feeling a lot of emotions because, you know, people like me who have thought outside of the box, because, you know, as a person of color, I'm obviously supposed to vote Democrat, right? The majority, traditionally, the majority of black people, the majority of American Jews vote Democrat, and the majority of gay people vote Democrat, and you're supposed to just vote according to those lines, right? And if you guys want to know, I'm... I'm bisexual. I, uh, I like it. I like a little bit of everything, you know. <laughs> and we're not gonna talk about that too much, but that's besides the point because I feel like our identity shouldn't speak to our political affiliations. You have to vote accordingly. You have to vote according to what you truly believe is gonna make your country better. And I truly voted with the belief that JD Vance and Donald Trump would make this country better, and I stand by that even now. And I'm not gonna lie, I was gonna dip out of this election, like every other election, this was the first time that I voted. And I wasn't going to vote this time. But I really woke up to the reality that my vote matters, that my ancestors died on behalf of my privilege to vote. And I need to take advantage of that and really speak to the world, to speak to my country, my dissatisfaction with the current administration, and not let them steal another win.
And I do say steal because when you look at the numbers, it, it kind of looks like they stole the last election. But that's going to be another that's going to be another podcast. Did you hear about Peanut? Peanut the squirrel? The squirrel that was quite literally swatted and euthanized alongside Fred the raccoon because some liberal white woman was jealous of this man who ran an animal rescue for over seven years with this squirrel and this raccoon being the face of that animal rescue where he's rescuing not only squirrels and raccoons but horses and various other animals and he was demonized and attacked and people on the left said screw him and his maga squirrel because you know Animals have political affiliations now, and you see how anyone who's on the right gets demonized for being fascist. It's, it's tiring because now for the first time in history, Trump has had more black, more Jewish, more women support, and most notably a black and Jewish support than at any other point in history for a Republican president. It's crazy. It's impressive. It's inspiring because it shows that in spite of being from the black culture or the white culture or the LGBTZWBD. And we're going to get into that because I have a lot of opinions on uh, gender identity versus sexuality versus how you choose to identify. And I have a lot of qualms with gay, bisexual, lesbian people being told that they also, by inherently being from this sexuality, also are completely sympathetic with children transitioning and and uh traditional uh natural born men uh playing competitively against natural born women i have a, a strong opinions about that but because i'm from the the rainbow flag community we all think the same we're all a monolith because i'm black obviously i'm gonna vote according to what barack obama tells me to do because you know barack obama is the leader of black people he's not a former u.s president who dropped more bombs on the middle east than any in the past 10 years any u.s president no he's he's the leader of black people we're like smurfs apparently we're like lemmings if he if he jumps off the cliff we all are behind him jumping off the cliff this kind of rhetoric is exactly why Trump won and won in a way that you can't deny. I'm 26 years old. I've lived through a lot. I've seen a lot in this country. And I, I was so disillusioned that I truly believed that leaving the country was the only solution to get away from such brain dead people who are willing to use their sexuality, their religion their cultural identity to push for this ultra progressive far left version of america that values multiculturalism and diversity over true progress and values people's feelings over the fact of life which is most americans want to be united under the fact that in spite of your sexuality, in spite of your color, in spite of where you come from and who you vote for, we all are represented by one president. And we got to stop this divide and conquer BS that mainstream media has been creating by calling half the country garbage, by calling half the country fascist. I've seen many people online say Trump won because of ignorant Latino voters, ignorant, uneducated white men sexist black men idiot arabs who deserve to get deported it is that's not true in fact it shows the intolerance of left-wing people as soon as their constituents don't vote with them all that tolerance and all that valuing of diversity equity and inclusion goes right out the window when you don't agree with them it's almost as if they don't want the diversity equity inclusion they just want the vote they just want a virtue signal about how much they care about diversity while simultaneously seeing, seeing themselves as saviors of these cultures. They want an infinite amount of illegal, unvetted migrants, regardless of what their status will be in this country in terms of criminality and what they do and whether or not their kids get trafficked, simply so they can say that they're good people for letting them on this side. America has seen right through that. For the most part, 
you know, because uh, there is still half the country that sees our side, the the Republican voters and people on the right wing. Because mind you, I'm still in the center, but I quite proudly have left the far left. Watch my old videos if you want to get that taste of me, the the A cab taste of me, the the super progressive version of me. That's that's young men shit. I'm 26 years old going on 27. I grew up. I would appreciate you guys seeing the character development, the, dis the disillusionment of s seeing me go from one extreme to stillness, to equality. The understanding that people on the left and people on the right have very important things to say and we have to respect everyone regardless of what they vote for and what they believe. And we got to stop getting caught up on the words and the identity politics. Because this is the beauty of America. We are the most diverse. We are the most accepting of migrants on this planet. And what I mean by that is not only do we accept migrants, but we allow them to integrate into our culture. We don't allow them to come here and take over the culture and impose their will on us. They come here because they value what we have to offer them. They value what is here. They value what our ancestors actually fought and died for. Mind you, I have ancestors who were Native Americans, who were Blacks, who were Whites, and they all worked together, they all fought each other, they all coexisted, for better or for worse, but I'm proud of every single one of them for allowing me the privilege to be born here, to understand there is no perfect place, but to be in a place that gets the semblance of democracy to the extent that we get to vote that we get to speak out, that we get to have an opinion, and we're not immediately disappeared for having, quote unquote, the wrong opinion. That's a privilege that not many people on this earth have. And I refuse to have it taken away by far left extremists who believe that word policing and suppressing free speech and free thought and free ideas and imposing their beliefs on be it abortion or migrant policy or racial diversity or a whole infinite amount of issues to not allow them to impose their beliefs on others is the American dream. We didn't come here to have other people's will imposed on us. The beauty of America is many European countries would fit within this landmass that we call the United States of America. And we come from such diverse origins. This binary of oppressor, oppressed, black, white, it just doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Most black Americans and most white Americans at this point are mixed to some degree, like me. And so we come from cultures that can't speak to that binary because the binary is like seven, eight, nine, ten cultures mixed into one and we can play the blood quantum game and we can vote based on blood quantum and we can really oversimplify it and allow scientific racism to decide who we vote for and how we process our thoughts and our feelings but as soon as we get out of the victim mindset and realize oh shit the black person and the white person may agree on 99.9% .9 of the things and it has nothing to do with the melanin in their eyes and in their skin. It has everything to do with where you're at in this country, how you see the laws and the policies impacting you, how you see the cost of living going up or down, what your beliefs are based on your faith, which deserve to be respected, because this is the land of the free. This isn't the land of the progressives. This isn't the land of the left. It's never been and it never will be because we have allowed the left and I'm talking the far left to hijack this country. And now we're finding ourselves, it's not the center anymore, it's on the right. And good riddance to all that, because look, I was born and raised in Washington. Every time Trump or another Republican got elected, there was mass protest. I got to watch the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, a place that was literally just full of sexual assault violence. A 16 year old black teenager got murdered in Chaz, in CHOP, whatever you want to call it. And they were busy hiding bullet casings and saying, we won't talk to the police and we won't say who killed this child. 
but that's progress, right? This is what happens when you take away and uh, you take away the rights of police and you disillusion those people who protect us. This is what happens when you shame people for being white, for being men, for being masculine, for being who they are. It's almost as if people want to live according to their values, how they were raised and not yours that you impose on them. And we've seen a mass wake up in this country that has allowed people the privilege to vote accordingly and to show the world and their fellow Americans what they truly stand for. I am proud to be a part of that wave because I think people voted correctly. I think they voted accordingly. And I think that America is going to progress in a positive way because of this. Now, you guys might be wondering, Sandra, why are you getting so political all of a sudden? I, I thought you liked to just talk about video games and, and mental health and, 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 and Jew shit. <laughs> because all of this stuff ties in. You see, Chuck Schumer the former Senate Majority Leader, who is of Jewish ancestry, quite literally said a week before the election to Columbia University's uh, director that she should ignore anti-Semitism on college campuses because it's only Republicans who care about it. He was more worried about keeping his position that he was unwilling as a Jew, if you can even say that, he was unwilling to use his position as a Jew, as one of the most powerful people in the country and in the world, to stand up against anti-Semitism because he wanted to win a couple of votes. Now he's no longer the Senate Majority Leader. Good riddance. It's almost as if being from a certain culture doesn't entitle you to speak for them. That's the beauty of America. It's sometimes it's not as simple as, oh, put a colored person there. <laughs> put someone who comes from the culture, they'll understand because that's not, that's not how this stuff works. We need people who are qualified. We need people who actually stand against not only anti-Semitism, but bigotry in all forms, against men, against women, against black people, Jewish people, Hispanic people, Arab people. And we need to stop just respecting people's identity. We need to respect their values. These Democrats are the same people who allowed your college campuses and your communities to ramp up the anti-Semitic violence, all on behalf of a country that's halfway across the world that most Americans, when they say from the river to the sea, they can't say what river and what sea. They're just saying what they think sounds good because anything that's against Jews sounds good. And people like me of mixed race ancestry, of mixed uh, race uh, ethnicity, have to just receive hatred for simply existing because one political party actively refuses to stand up against it because, you know, calling Jews Zionist, in which statistically speaking, over 90%, over 95%, sorry, of Jews are Zionists, which is the simple belief that we deserve our indigenous homeland and our ancient homeland of Israel, somewhere that we've always been and always will be. Calling us Zionist now justifies anti-Semitic attacks. It justifies synagogues getting burned down and vandalized. It, it justifies our elderly and our vulnerable getting attacked on the street by various uh, color spectrum of people, black people, Hispanic, Arab people. We just seen two weeks ago someone screaming Allahu Akbar and shooting uh, an Orthodox Jew in the back and getting into the shootout, getting into a shootout with police. We've seen a National Guard member who is an active Hamas operative trying to commit terrorist violence in this country. We have been infiltrated by left-wing religious extremists. And this is something that most Americans aren't okay with because when this country was built, whether or not you want to say, oh, it was built in slavery, blah, 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 the victim complex is done. Because the founding fathers, regardless, of what you believe they were this one had a slave this one was a rapist this one was this this one was that at the end of the at the end of the day they came together based on the values that the future of america is one in which in spite of what you are 
you get to stand up for yourself and be represented because you are an American, not because you are a white man. And this binary of oppressor oppressed was destroyed inherently because of the fact that they knew that it had to be destroyed. And when they wrote the Declaration of Independence, they wrote it with the knowledge that the people who were going to be getting represented were all going to be just white, rich slave owners. They knew that. In fact, that's what they were getting away from when they left America on the Mayflower, those, those dusty pilgrims. <laughs> so, of which I'm descended from, mind you. I'm not just descended from the slaves. I'm not just descended from the poor Native Americans who, who own this land and, and all this other stuff. As an American, I'm descended from the whole story. And I am proud to be able to vote in 2024 accordingly to the values that I truly stand in, in spite of my phenotype, in spite of my religious beliefs, because, you know, it only entitles me to vote one way, and that's for the, the legacy media's perception of what people like me are supposed to vote for. And if I don't vote accordingly, I'm a sexist, I'm a piece of trash, I'm garbage, I'm a toxic man. It's almost as if attacking people based on their identity doesn't get you votes. And it should really speak to you if orange bad man, a, a term that I've used, Donald Trump. Like we've all had our criticisms on him, but it, it really just it, it just speaks to the the persistence of his character, and in spite of the attacks that we've all inflicted on him, that he's still willing to stand and fight for all of us in spite of this, because that's what true Americans do. They allow you to have differences but they'll protect you to the death. Because Kamala didn't take any bullets. She wasn't getting any attempts on her life. When she was asked what the difference between her and Biden was, she didn't have any idea what to say. Because the truth is, her campaign was built on saying, I am not Trump. I am not a fascist. I am a woman and I care about abortion rights. That was her whole platform. At any point, she could have said, I'm going to do this for this people. I'm going to do this for these people. I'm going to do this for these people. No, I'm a woman from the working middle class. So blah, blah, blah. It's like, it didn't work. And so now we're here. And I think we should look at this time because it is a historic time. Regardless of who won, this was a historic election. And I am proud to be a young man as a part of it. And I am not afraid for the future. In fact, I'm excited. For the first time, I'm happy to be here in this land, in this country. I was very ashamed over the past four years because this country was going down the drain. And now we have someone who's going to drain the swamp. All right. I'm done yapping. I wanted this to be a podcast purely talking about the election. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been episode 38 of the Sandro Podcast. If you have, like this video, like this podcast, share this podcast, comment what you want to see, comment what you like, comment what you didn't like. All the interactions matter. And I value you. Use this privilege. If you are in the United States, use your privilege to shoot for the stars and don't let your identity, don't let your sexuality, don't let your anything stop you from living your best life. And don't you dare blame who leads this country if their policies aren't holding you back and their communities aren't holding you back. And even if they are, don't let them stop you from being true to yourself. That's the privilege that we get here. And if you're in a country where you are getting held back in an in a objectively bad way, make whatever moves you can to make your life better because no one's going to do that for you. God is watching. And God has all the power. And so you have to live according to that. You are just a small drop in the bucket, as am I, as is Trump, as is Kamala. And this is all part of a wider plan. And so live accordingly. Don't victimize yourself. Take as much responsibility as you can. And maybe, just maybe, will you get to where you want to and where you need to go? That's all I got to say. It's been a blessing. You, you're probably wondering, where am I right now? <laughs> Watch my videos from six, seven years ago, and you'll get an idea. 
It's been nice coming back under these trees. I've made many a videos here. Many a podcast. Well, podcast? Probably not. But uh, I've made many videos here. And I'm happy to be back. You probably won't see any more of these in this area. <laughs> I snuck in here. But um, it was nice. So, shalom. Peace. Glad you showed up for this podcast. I'm happy that you've listened. It's been a privilege. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching.